Hi everybody, it's Adam with heartvalvesurgery.com and we are at the American Association for Thoracic Surgery Conference in Los Angeles and I'm thrilled to be joined by Dr. Ibrahim Sultan, who's a leading cardiac surgeon at UPMC in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Dr. Sultan, thanks so much for being with me today. Great, thank you for having me, Adam. Appreciate yes, it. so there's a lot of great presentations. There's even some debates going on here. We wanna answer though, a patient question that came in just a few minutes ago, and this one's from Brad. He asks, I have been unexpectedly diagnosed with bicuspid aortic valve and an aneurysm. My doctor told me I will probably need surgery in the next few years, but was vague about when that would be. As you might imagine, I'm a little stressed out and worrying about the future. Are there any specific test results that will tell me when I should have surgery? No, that's a, that's a very insightful and great question, uh, Brad. So here's what I would say. So first of all, bicuspid aortic valves are very common, uh, as you may know, about 2% of the population has it. What we also know is once you have a bicuspid aortic valve, you're also likely to have an aortic aneurysm. Third point, what we know is if you have a bicuspid aortic valve and an aortic aneurysm, we know that those aneurysms tend to grow at a faster rate than the rest of the population. What that means is then your surgeon or doctor may be correct, which is you will likely need surgery down the line. The timing is variable. So the reason to operate uh, on you, Brad, or recommend surgery to you would be either if your bicuspid aortic valve were to fail uh, with leaking or by being tight, or your aneurysm were to get to a certain size such as five centimeter, which is now the recommended size for needing surgery. The important aspect of this is both of these should be looked at appropriately, meaning a valve failure using an echocardiogram that's reliable and can be replicated, and a CAT scan that is what we call a gated CAT scan that times your aorta and its mapping with your heart rate. And that gives you a precise and accurate measurement of how big your aneurysm is. Now, I've got to ask you a follow-up because I imagine Brad might be wondering, what are my treatment options. There's a lot of different approaches. What are your thoughts for the different treatment options that might be available to Brad? So depending on your age, the most common way that, that most surgeons would recommend would be surgery. Uh, that can be done with a sternotomy or a minimally invasive approach. Uh, majority of the times, your aneurysm will need to be replaced with a woven polyester graft, uh, and your heart valve may need to be repaired or replaced. If it's leaky, most of the times it can be repaired using your own tissue. If it's tight or stenosed, uh, it'll likely have to be replaced uh, with a prosthetic aortic valve or an artificial heart valve. That's fantastic. And I've got to ask, there's one other procedure. We've been hearing lots and lots about keeping the patient's native valve if possible. Uh, called a, uh, maybe it's a valve sparing mm -hmm. procedure. Is that something that you're doing at UPMC? Absolutely. So we are one of the leading centers in doing valve sparing root replacement in patients with bicuspid aortic valves. So what we know and the way I talk to patients about this is, is, is uh, at least in my way, in my mind, simple, which is it's kind of like going to a tailor with a pair of pants. If you have a pair of pants that are too long, those can be hemmed meaning if you have an aortic valve or a bicuspid aortic valve that has excess leaflet tissue and is leaky, it can be repaired using your own tissue. And that is always plan A, B, and C. If it's very tight and you don't have enough leaflet tissue that's healthy or can be repaired, and it's primarily failing because of your valve is, has calcium on it or is tight, it typically needs to be replaced. Well, Brad, I hope that helped you. I know it helped me. And Dr. Sultan, on behalf of all the patients at heartvalvesurgery.com, patients all over the world, thanks for everything you're doing at UPMC in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Thanks so much for being with me today. Great. Thank you, Adam. Hi everybody, it's Adam. I hope you enjoyed that video. And don't forget, you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel. Watch the next two educational videos coming up on your screen or click the blue button to visit heartvalvesurgery.com.